All right, hello, this is Mr. Strelekis here with a lecture on how to use tkinter in Python 2.7. Now, one, one thing we should probably just go and start off is why. Um, some of you might be asking, might already know what tkinter does and ask why am I using it. Well, the reason is it's really quick to learn. And for my classes, uh, we need to learn this quickly because we don't have much time before the end of the year. So tkinter is our choice. Um, as for those who do not know what tkinter is, well, let's talk about why. Really and truly, we're looking at what do you want. We're looking at what you actually want. You want to use Windows, as in like these things. You notice how like um, here, if I were to open up a uh, calculator right here, this is a window. That's the halo of the sun from uh, from uh, Silent Hill. I didn't mean to open that up. Or terrify you if... Anyway, let's talk. So yeah, there's a window here. This is a window. This is a, um, a display thing. It has buttons. It, it's use, usable. It's not just a blank console window. So you want to do that. Um, you also want to be able to use uh, little boxes like this one. How you can use buttons with our boxes and add, add numbers to them. And even in some places, type stuff in. You want to do all that. You also want to go ahead and get a good exam grade and everything. So, you know, you want to use Windows, buttons, text boxes. You know, you want visualizations. You want to be able to visualize stuff for your user. You want to look like what you consider to be a real program. Well, tkinter is actually a great way of, of doing that. Uh, we just go ahead and start off. This is for what's called a graphical user interface, um, otherwise abbreviated as GUI, pronounced GUI, G-U-I, graphical user interface, uh, which means that it is a visual thing that the user can interact with. Let's, let's go right into it. All right. Firstly, we, can, we have to, in order to use tkinter, we have to import it. So I'm going to write in here from tkinter, import star. Star is a wild card, so it means import every all the functions and all the uh, little pieces of tkinter library. tkinter, I have the K lowercase and the T capitalized. All right, well now, having used, having gotten that, we need to go ahead and actually build our, our window. Now I'm going to go ahead and call our window variable frame. Um, tk is our, our function to actually build a new tkinter window. I call it frame because, well, one, we need a variable. We, in order to actually control it, I need a variable. So that way I can keep changing things about this window, because that just makes a blank window. Uh, and the other thing is I call it a frame because that's technically the name for it. Now, that on its own does, does nothing, as you see. Nothing at all. We have to actually call frames main loop, which is a function that um, actually makes a little thing pop up. Main loop means right now this program is looping. It's waiting for you to do something to it. And next, uh, always they have this at the at the bottom. All right, so. That's the two basic things you need for it. Um, I'm also going to go ahead and also give it some sizing using this geometry function that does indeed use quotes. Um, I guess it'll start off as 100 by 100. That's width by height. So it ends up being that big. And actually, that's, that's not a good size at all. I'm going to make it 500 by 500. Mm -hmm. I don't know. And uh, we'll also change the uh, title real quick. Uh, new example. And you'll see that pop up. Boom. Okay. Not necessary, really, to make a good program, but, I mean, you probably want as much control as you possible. All right. Let's, uh, let's go into something that's uh, going to be kind of easy to put on. It's called a label. And for those of you who are in class with me, 
I, uh, you know that I did this the opposite way, probably. Unless I changed it at the last minute. But um, we're going we're gonna to start with this one. So just like the, uh, the tkinter frame, I want to go ahead and make a new variable for our label. And let me go ahead and just say what a label is. A label is like, if I were to open this calculator up again, um, actually, I don't think there are any on here. Oh, here we are. It's, no, it's not actually one. Here we are. These things. These things are labels. Just text that we can't change, uh, that we can't change. Like this thing's labeled right here. I can't type in there. I can't change it in any way. So it's just simply text on the page. We use this a lot for showing instructions. So um, I might put on here, press the button. There's no button yet, but um, we'll, we'll put one on there. Now I've made it, but it's not, it's, not gonna, it's not really there yet. Like you don't see the words press the button anywhere. So instead I have to actually place it on the screen um, using these X and Y coordinates. I'm going to put just 10 from the left, just a design thing I like to do and at least like 20 from the top. Again, just a design thing that I like to do. And there we are. Having this little padding here, I think just looks nicer than having it at zero, zero. Okay, so that's that's a label. Now, obviously what I need next then is a button. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna make a new button. This button. All right, now this button is gonna be uh, for actually uh, making something work. So again, it's going to have a text value. By the way, this is how we're going to make most of our things on these single lines, where we're going to have each value of the element, each value of the what's called a widget, uh, defined right there. So um, the button itself, I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to put the text "Press Me" on it, and that might be okay, but that's really not good enough. I'm going to also make it have a certain width. Um, otherwise, it's just going to be standard width, so I'm going to make that uh, 10. And it's height, I'm going to make 1. Uh, play with those values a little bit to get exactly what the height and width should be for your specific program. Uh, lastly, I'm going I'm to ignore command for just a moment. I just want to show you what that one's going to look like. Uh, X to 10, then Y at like 35 because I want to be at least 10 or so below the other one, so that way I could be, yeah, it's a little close, but whatever. So I can at least have this you know, really quickly put on. By the way, notice, we've been at this for, let me check, been at this for like seven minutes, and we've already got that much made. So again, this is kind of why I like to use tank enter. It's quick. A little fun story is that I actually use tank enter in Python before actually learning Python. That's how quick it is. All right, now our button though doesn't do anything at all. It does nothing. Nothing happens. So let's go ahead and fix that. Um, what we're going to do is every time you press the button, I'm going to add to here. Let me pop up this little window. All right, I'm going to add to this blank part here. I'm going to put a text box here. And I'm going to add another word to the end of it saying, you press the button. Not, not a big program. Actually, I'm going to, it's going to say, you press the button blank times. So let me show you that. I need to go and make a text. By the way, I've been naming each of these things with um, the first letter of the object, of the widget, and then a one. Um, when you actually make something that does it, I might change this to, you know, presser, presser button, you know, something like that. Just that way, it, it makes more sense, you know, so that when I see it later in code, if I have 100 lines of code, or 500 lines of code, I can read it and know, oh, okay, that's the but that's that presser button thing that says press me on it. Easy. In fact, I might make that be press me button. I'll know exactly what it is then. It's a little nicer, a little easier to remember what it is rather than go back and check every time. So I'm just using T1, L1, and, well, no longer B1, just as a placeholders. I wouldn't actually do that in a real program. Anyways, so 
with our, our text, um, I'm again going to give it a width and a height. And since I wanted to kind of fill up this, well, yeah, I can't really run that yet. Uh, since I wanted to fill up that space, and that was like a really big space, why do I have so much stuff open? Anyway, um, yeah, since it's a big space, uh, 300, and it's already uh, going to be at least like 10 from the side, so they're going to be like around the 50s. I want at least like 100 far width here. Um, then height is probably going to be another 200, because, well, I, width's probably going to be 200, height's going to be 100 because this. And that's all I really want to set for it, and then I'm going to place it on the field. And my decisions for this is just, oops, yeah, that's, that's going to be smaller. Uh, height at 50. I might have misjudged what that meant. Yeah. Man, I really misjudged this one. Okay, we'll make this 50, this 20. And we'll see what happens. Whatever. Good enough. All right, yeah, and just it's it's so now we have this field filled with a text box, and we can actually write in that now. It's pretty cool. So let's uh, let's fix let's 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 make some stuff for it now. All right, I want my press me button to actually do something. I want I want to put a function here. Um, uh, I guess I call it press me. And for this, I want to actually add to this one. So in order to add to this text box, well, let's go ahead and do that. What was the name of our variable that had the text box? Well, T1. So this means I'm able to control it because, again, I set it to a variable. That's one of the big things about variables is that you continue to control it. So I can now go and insert into it. And the insert function takes two parameters. The first one is the index, and you go, oh, like 0, 1, 2, 3? No, not like those. It's like end. I mean, just put it at the end of it. There's end, and there's insert. But let's just worry about end. So that's just going to put it to the end of the text box. Now, that doesn't mean the end of the text box, like the lower right-hand corner, but the end of the text of the text box. For us, since there's no text in the text box, it's going to be um, at the very beginning, because in the top left, because there's there's no text. So it goes to the end of the text, and the text is blank. You'll see. And then here in this part is where I put the stuff I want to write. Um, so I said you pressed the button, and then I had um, blank times. We'll put a number in there later. Now, I, you might notice, so don't do anything, because I need to do this. I'm going to show you another command, another um, property of the button widget. Each of these widgets have their own unique properties. I mean, some of them have the same ones, like width, height, text, you know, because those are common. But button has another one that's special to it called command. And I set that equal to the name of my function. Now notice, I do not put the parentheses in there, because that would be a function call. If I put the parentheses in there, it will call it. So I don't do that. So I do not put the parentheses in the command. But that will, with, the, with it as it is, it will now call this meth, this function, and it will insert that text in there. Look at that, and just goes right to the end. So the next one will be right there where my cursor is. Boom. Boom. And not my cursor, but the insertion point. But you know what I meant. Yeah. And the very first time I, I run it, 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 it puts it right there. Okay, cool. We have some functionality on these buttons now. Uh, let's go ahead and... Let's see, what else is I going to show you? Yeah, that was it. Yeah, so that's, that's basically what you need to see about button, label, and text. Wasn't that quick? We're only 14 minutes into this. Alright, so let's actually do something kind of cool now. 
we're gonna replace this and we'll put some variable name here. This would be num times pressed. Now we don't have that variable there right now, so if I try to like you know, run that, it's gonna be like, wait a minute, that doesn't, that's not real. It doesn't like it when I do that, you know. It's it's unhappy. So I'm gonna also go ahead and somewhere in the file and make num times pressed equal to zero. So now it'll have that. Whoops, whoops, whoops. I forgot about that. <laughs> Sorry about that. Okay. One other thing we have to do first. Um, you'll notice that that error said um, said that we cannot put concatenate. Concatenate is just a fancy word for putting two words together. Um, can I can I, cat, can cat, blah, blah, concatenate string and integer together? It says, hey, num times pressed is a number, you jerk. Uh, you can't go in there. So we simply turn it into a string. String is word or phrase, if you remember. Uh, so I turn it into that, and there we go. Doesn't increment, of course, because, well, we never tell it to increment. We will next. But do notice what I did there. I made a new variable that had a certain type of data, numbers. And then it got mad at me when I tried to put that in there. So in order to avoid it getting mad at me, I turned it into a, that number into a word. It's still zero, but it's now zero the character rather than zero the value. Slightly different. That's called casting. Anyways, so let's go and now increment number times pressed. And I do that by saying either I can do equals num times pressed plus one, because now I'm saying it equal to itself plus one. Or we can do the, the much quicker way, do plus equals one. Same thing. Plus equals is a short, shorter way of writing it out. So I'm adding one to it, so that way, whoops, whoops. <laughs> I keep forgetting to do stuff like that. That wasn't, that wasn't a good thing to do. Which I'm sorry, I'm actually kind of confused about that. That's weird. It's okay with that. Hmm. Hmm. That's actually truly mysterious. Did I guide you wrong on this? Yeah, I tested most of this program. I just didn't think that would be a problem. Oh, okay. Let's do our normal thing. Global. Number time space. Yeah, I'm sorry about that. I, I honestly do not know why it's having that problem. Well, there you go. So as you can see, I can go ahead and now make it increment and tell me how many times I pressed it. That looks a little high, but actually counting back, yeah, I did press it 23 times. Okay, well that's cool. Alright, well, yeah, so, yeah, that's, that's weird. Anyways, you can go ahead and do that. Again, even though I don't like global variables very much, you can do that, and that helps things. Uh, let's see. Yes. So, um, as you can see, I took care of that problem by just incrementing it, and now I can have a little smarter of a, of a function here. And I'm also going to add in a, a new line here. That's that backslash n. That's the slash that's probably underneath your backspace. So that way, we can have it all in one line. Oh, all in multiple lines, but like lined up. Yeah. I can even you know, erase some of this. But, so you see how that um, is very useful for you in your programs. You can check things, you can change them, do insert commands and the like. Um, there are there's other resources I can show you more about this. But I'm getting to 20 minutes now, so I figure I should go and wrap it up. So 
to review, import it, import TK enter, lowercase k, uh, make a new TK. You can change its size and its title, add things onto it, and give it functions that work with stuff. And then always have that main loop part so that way the frame will actually wait for you to enter stuff. So, a reminder let me go ahead and show a couple of things from the presentation we watched in class. A uh, reminder to you is that that's a button. Uh, let's use this one. These are buttons, and that's a label right there. There's no text box on this, but you know, as you can see. Uh, not all the widgets are always necessary. You know, there aren't very many on this one, but it still has some use. Well, not very much. But yeah, just use the parts that you need, and then ask for more help on some of them. All right, well, I think that would be it for this one. All right. Let me know if you have any questions. I'll do my best to answer them. All right, now, before I wrap up, yes, I almost forgot. Before I wrap up, I know, we're almost at the end. Uh, there's one more thing we need to do, which is make sure that we can handle parameters. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make another function uh, and another button to go with it. So button and function. In fact, I might go ahead and put these two together so that way, so that way we can uh, see them a little closer. And this one's going to be for clear box, then add text. And it's going to take a parameter this time. That's going to go ahead and clear out. It's, it's going to clear our text box and then add something new. So that actually is an interesting question. If we're not supposed to put parentheses in here, then um, what, are, what are we supposed to do when we have parameters? Because it's not going to work. Well, I'm glad you asked. Because you see, here's this fun thing that we have. It's called Lambda. Now, we're going to use that soon. But first, let's go and actually write our clear box, then add text um, 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 function, which is... Oh, okay. yeah, so what it's going to do, first thing is obviously to clear the box. So let's clear that box. So um, I wanted to clear T1's text box. So you remember the insert command. We're still going to use that one, but first we need to delete. So let's start by deleting. Now this is one where we say, okay, I need my, my start and my end. It takes two parameters. First is the first index, and the second one is the last index of all the stuff I want to clear out. So you go, okay, this one I remember. This one I know how. I remember to use end, because that's where I want to stop. I want to clear everything from the beginning to the end. So obviously this one must be beginning in capitals. And you would be wrong. Not really a surprise. So what do we do? Well, this is fun. It's uh, quote 1.0. Yeah. So that says from the beginning to the end. So let's go ahead and insert something. Uh, then we're going to go ahead and at the end of our box, which is now cleared, so it's going to be in the top left. Oh, in the top left of the text box, you know, because that's where we're going to add it. Um, we're going to write text, because text is some text, and it's going to be a word or, or a phrase or something. So that's what's going to be written into our box. So this is clears from start to end. Appends to end of text. Oh, T1. So yeah, with that, two lines have already written that function. But now let's go ahead and actually use it. So this is going to be the clear button. It's obviously going to have to go somewhere else. I'm going to move to the other side of the page. And move it up a little bit so we can do it. I'm going to call it clear. And you're going to see that that's now in entirely the wrong place, but whatever. We're going we're gonna to move it up just a little bit more. Okay. So, yeah. 
There we go. Now we got clear up there. And uh, since I haven't, since I made it have the same command, it does the same thing. But we're going to change that now. It's going to do the clear box, then add text. Now here's the issue. If I try to do it like that, it's going to give me an error saying that um, I'm supposed to give it a parameter of some sort. And th but then if I try to you know actually put something in there, it's it's not going to work because well it's you'll see it's going to immediately just do it off the bat because it treats it as a function call. But then if I try to do the clear, it's just not going to it's just not going to do anything. Can't find that function. So what I have to do is I have to use lambda. Lambda is written as it's spelled, pronounced, whatever. You write it right there with a colon to then go ahead and do this stuff here. So then if we go ahead and look at that, that means now you see it didn't start off with hey, and then it actually clears it and writes hey. Kind of cool. And just simply kind of necessary if you need to, you know, call a function that has a parameter, you need to use this lambda key. So if you're using a function that doesn't have it, do not use any parentheses. If you're using a function that does have parameters, use lambda and then put in parentheses and values or variables as necessary. Okay, now I think we have finished. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up. Thanks for watching.